Well, I, I would say, first of all, it's not, it's, it's a movie about my life. It's not what the movie's being made about. It's being made about a story in which both my wife and I were involved. But I don't see it as a story about my life. I see it much more as a story about uh, the U.S. government and, and the Bush administration uh, trying to shut people up, legitimate critics of their dastardly and disastrous policies. Well, obviously, uh, being portrayed by Sean Penn is uh, is something that I never would have expected. He's he's clearly one of our, our finest actors, one of the finest actors of his generation. Um, you know, he's a pretty big time lefty. He's probably a little bit to the left of me, but he's a consummate actor, and um, and he really does try and get into your skin. And he has spent a lot of time with me doing just that. Uh, Sean had flown uh, Southwest Airlines from San Francisco about a week after he won his Oscar for Harvey Milk, for Milk, and uh, rented himself a car in Albuquerque, he drove up to Santa Fe, got out of the car, walked in, said, I have just one question, do you like the script? And we said yes. He said, excuse me, got on the phone, called his agent, said, I'm in. Well, I wouldn't say we worked together. I would say we spent about a week together, pretty much joined at the hip, uh, where we were together day and night. Um, and I told him, I told Sean that, uh, that from my perspective, um, uh, it's not portraying me that's important. It is telling the story. Uh, his reply was depiction is interpretation. And so I get that now from, uh, from um, an actor who has really perfected uh, method acting. Well, early on, we met with uh, uh, Jez and John Henry Butter Butterworth. Uh, they came and spent time with us in Washington, D.C. Um, and we did everything we could to answer all their questions and point them in directions we thought they ought to go to get information they needed. They happened to be in Washington at the time of the Scooter Libby trial. So uh, clearly, that was a significant focus of their interest at that time. But beyond that, they, um, uh, they wanted to know an awful lot about our particular backgrounds. Uh, they had questions uh, from uh, our two books, my book in particular, at that time had been published. Um, and um, uh, they uh, wanted to, I think, be as factual as they could within the sort of constraints of a movie format. Um, and it certainly strikes me from the script that they were. Uh, we met Doug Lyman um, a year after uh, we had met with the um, with the screenwriters, uh, the Butterworth brothers, Jez and John Henry, um, and uh, he came. We spent about four days with him. Again, we flew back to Washington D.C. By that time, we were living in Santa Fe, um, and spent about four days with Doug. Uh, and he then um, used that opportunity also to query us from a different direction. By that time, the Scooter Liberty trial had uh, had been over for a year. And uh, Doug's vision of the movie was a little bit different from a courtroom drama. And uh, I think you see that in the movie. It really projects what the uh, potential consequences are of the betrayal of a uh, covert CI operative in rather dramatic terms. And people ought to understand uh, that this sort of stuff can and does happen. And that's why you protect the secrets, and that's why you protect your officers. Well, I think, I think there's a political part of it, as, um, but there's also a national security part. So I think it's a, it's a national security thriller is one of the stories. Uh, what happens when uh, the national security of the country is betrayed? And the fact that it happens to be betrayed by somebody or persons uh, in, in the administration makes it a domestic political thriller as well. But it is also um, a, a story of citizenship. It's a, it, it, and if there is a lesson to take away from it, it seems to me, it is we have responsibilities as citizens to hold our government to account, even when the government uh, tries to punish you for doing so. What I would hope that people would take from um, the movie are a couple of things. One, um, an appreciation and respect for the need to protect 
uh, the identities of covert sea officers because they work to defend the national security of the country. And the flip side of that is a willingness to be uh, less coddling of those who would betray the identity of uh, covert officers and people in the field doing work for us. And then the second, I think, larger lesson that I always try and leave with audiences when I speak to them is the importance of being a good citizen. You cannot sit back and be passive and expect that, uh, that the republic is going to survive. Um, the last phrase of the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States really exhorts citizens to hold their governments to account for what government does and says in their name. Well, it certainly struck me that, um, that this had, was a particularly dirty way of coming back at me. Um, Washington politics are bare knuckle, we all know that. But generally speaking, um, one's family are kept out of it, uh, unless those, the family's campaigning for you if you're a politician or, or, um, um, or your family gets busted or something happens in criminal activity. But you don't see Scooter Libby's wife in the news. You don't see Carl Rove's wife in the news. Uh, there was no reason to put my wife in the news. For the first time in our adult lives, uh, we were able to decide for ourselves where we wanted to live. Because uh, up until that point, when Valerie's career was uh, taken away from her, uh, it was the U.S. government who decided where we were going to live, whether it was Gabon or whether it was Washington, D.C., as she was working in headquarters. Uh, so we spent um, a couple of years thinking about where we wanted to raise our kids. And we ended up in Santa Fe, New Mexico, uh, which is a wonderful town. It's uh, the right size community. It's a state capital. It's tremendously diverse with uh, cultures and peoples who have been there for several hundred years. Um, and um, uh, the climate's good uh, and the people are nice. Well, one of the things that, that uh, appeals to me about, uh, about using a, a film to tell this story is um, I think there's a huge multiplier effect uh, because this is a society that takes in a lot of its information visually. Uh, and it's a particular responsibility in a story like this for Hollywood in dramatizing it to be faithful to the, to the truth, the underlying truth. Because this is a lens through which many people will remember this time 10 or 15 years from now. Very much like even people like me, I was an adult during the Watergate hearings. I watched the Sam Irvin committee hearings. I watched Haldeman, Ehrlichman, and Dean testify live. Um, but even with that own sort of personal history, um, when I think about Watergate now, 30 years later, uh, 35 years later, I think about it through the lens of all the president's men. So there is obviously um, uh, a real impact that can be made by film.